Hey, Yon. Yon. Yes, Thedra? Are you gonna paint up some nice friends for me to play with, Yon? What about me? I'm still great. No, I don't want some bloody skeleton, dude. I want some proper chaos. Well, I think I might have exactly what you want, Thedra, my dear. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the gallery. My name is Yon and today we are going to paint up Kagra's Ravagers. Here we have it, uh, Kagra the Usurper is the leader of the warband. Then we have uh, Sarsia Bittersoul, the spellcaster. And then Brassic Godblast, which is a shield and axe wearing mother. And then uh, Tower Kraken. And today we are going to paint these lovely folk up. And we're gonna do it in a speedish kind of fashion. So let's just start with airbrushing and getting a little bit of central highlights on them, and I'll meet you on the other side of that. There's nothing really much to say about the airbrushing, it's just a black undercoat and then a little bit of uh, white central highlight on top of that, focusing a little bit more on the pieces that are going to be more lightly colored, like the flames of the spells and similar objects like that. The airbrush I'm using is uh, a crap airbrush I bought for $20 on eBay, so type and model really doesn't have anything to do with it. It's a crap airbrush for simple projects and nothing too fancy. We are painting all the armor and the shields and the weapons in uh, Vallejo silver. I find this is a fun color and it's really bright for what we're gonna do next. Uh, after we paint all the weapons, all the armor and everything with this bright, bright silver color, we're gonna go over it with uh, the Black Templar contrast paint. Now, Black Templar is a dark contrast paint, and on flat surfaces like the shields, it might look a little bit off. So what I'm doing now is after it's starting to dry, it's not dry, it's just been on for a couple of seconds, maybe 10-15 seconds, I drag the brush down it again and make a little bit of a texture out of it, which is quite fun. Also, when we're doing both Kagra and uh, Sarthia, we are uh, watching ourselves not to put any paint on the faces. We don't want any paint on them yet. Then after I've, uh, the contrast paint has dried, we go over, over it with a uh, uh, dark wash ink. Uh, I'm using a uh, Green Stuff World uh, Atramentum Black Wash Ink, and this will tone it down again. Now, after all of that is dry, we start dry brushing it with a little bit of uh, silver again. Uh, silver, we're dry brushing the armor with silver. The weapons, we're not going to dry brush with silver. We're going to edge highlight them using the same silver as we used on the armor. But I find that the edge highlighting will make the edge, well, more highlighted, as the name implies. I start out with a small, small brush, but obviously, you don't need a small brush when you're edge highlighting. A thick brush holds more paint and is quite better at this. After I've highlighted everything with this kind of brush, I add a bit of water to the silver, dilute it a bit, make a silver glaze and go over the flat surfaces of the weapons so that dark uh, wash we put on them will not be as profound. After that, we go with into the gold armor trims and there's a lot of gold armor trims. Uh, I'm painting them up with uh, Retributor armor from GW. And then uh, I will, after that, shade them with uh, another contrast paint, Gullum and Flesh. We're going to use a lot of contrast paints in this because they are quick. They're shades to the next level. I don't know if it's a good level, but it's a next level. Then we dry brush it again with Retributor armor make it pop a little bit because it's been dulled down with the contrast paint and then a really fine dry brush with the silver paint I've used earlier 
just on the bare corners. Now we're into uh, the leather territory, and I'm using Army Painter Leather Brown, which is kind of handy for brown leather to use the leather brown. Paint all the belts, the boots, the straps, everything that needs painting, and uh, then we go into handles of the weapons. I'm using Vallejo Bone White for this, and uh, mainly I'm using this because it's a uh, fun paint. It's fun to use it later on. I also put the hand on uh, Dower Kraken. Uh, I make that extra bone white. It will be fun for the next step. Horns, bone white, because horns and bone is, well, fitting. Now over the leather parts, both boots, hilts, straps, everything, we're going to go over it with uh, the contrast paint Psycho Brown. We're going to be using a lot of contrast paint to get a quick, okay looking feeling to it. This is speedy-ish, like I say. The hilts, we go over that with the Basilicum Grey contrast paint, because it's a little bit thinner, so there's a lot of highlight going to sh shown through this uh, part of it, and it's good for small bits. The cloaks, we want dirty old leather, really, really dirty old leather, so a lot of uh, zenithal highlighting with Agra stones over top, nothing much else going on. The fur, we're gonna throw down on that, uh, the contrast uh, wildwood, except uh, for on our mage, there we're using Space Wolf Grey, because we're going for a little bit different theme for the mage. Space Wolf Grey also on all the sheath, and on the bones we're using Skeletal Horde. It's simple, it's easy, it looks okay. It'll be fun on the tabletop, four feet away, it looks great. Now we're gonna start putting down a theme for each character. All of them will have one major color in two different tones. So for our mage, we're gonna have Teraton Torqua Rope and Leviathan Blue Cloak. And now the fur makes more sense than we put down earlier. Up next is our Nurgle guy. Creed Camo Contrast on the leather bit and then Militarum Green on the furry bit on the end of his axe. This makes him more nurgly and it's quick, it's just one contrast. Now the hand, the light color we put down earlier, we're going to put Magus Purple on it, it's a light contrast paint. And then we're going to use uh, Volupus Pink on all of the scales. It's a slanashy kind of looking guy because he's got a proud pose, he looks like an ecocentric moron. And now on Kagra herself we're going Corn. It's a uh, Blood Angel's Red Cloak. It's dark, dark red, and then a little bit of grey found orange for the hair, because it's a, it's a red-ish kind of color. Now we're starting on the skin tones. Uh, for our mates, we're starting with Bone White for the basic skin tone, and we're going to darken it down with a lot of Drucci Violet. More Drucci Violet on the horns than the actual skin, but still, we're going to keep it quite thick. We want a lot of dark shadows in here. Then we highlight it with thinned out uh, bone white again, just to make it pop a little bit. We're not doing too complex, it has to look good. From four feet, this is enough. And now back to Kagra, we are adding her skin tone. We're starting again with the bone white, just to make a, a decent undertone to start with. And then we go over it with a mix of uh, barbarian, pink barbarian tone, with a little bit of bone white, to make it a little bit of a nice skin tone. And we shade that with dark oak skin. The contrast paint because she is dark oath ish maybe someday she was a dark oath and then we highlight that again with the same mixture we used as the base color this uh, game uh, this uh, barbarian flesh tone mixed with bone white and uh, now we're starting on the spells the spells they were interesting i painted them all white again even more so than the zenithal was but then I went in with uh, great contrast paints, blue contrast paints, and to my great dismay, did not turn on the camera. But it looked great. I, I probably looked great doing it as well. Now we're dotting in the eyes. One tiny little white dot in each eye. Just steady yourself. I have really shaky hands, so three points on the table. You look how good the spells look. Wish I could have shown you how I painted them, but it was great. It was an awesome paint job. Now, basing. I have to do basing again. 
we're just pulling down a little bit of grey on all the rock nothing too fancy just quickly brushing it on more quickly than that it's good to throw down the thing you're painting just toss it to the table firmly and now a little bit of bone white on the skulls and uh, nothing much to say about this this is simple stuff this is bone white and we're gonna shade it all up in the same color in a little, little bit later on it'll look great a bit of brown for all the gr ground bits Now we're going to paint up this small silver bit with, well, silver, and then the bases are ready for shading on all the ground bits, on the skulls, on the chain. We're going to throw a Green Stuff World washing and a Lucian Earth. It's a fun little ink, and I kind of like it at this point. Tried it out a few weeks back, and yeah, it stuck a bit. It's kind of like a different take on earth shade and on all the rocky bits both well if it's on the ground and it's not earth it's rock and then we're using from green stuff world as well washing atramentum black it's a bit darker than no oil up in my opinion and I can like it a little bit of blood for the blood god on the axis because this is chaos and it needs its blood it's just part of it and there we have them the Quartet of Chaos, Kaka Usurper, Sarsia Bittersoul, Dower Kraken, and Rasek Godblessed, and quick, dirty, interesting, hopefully, kind of way to paint them up using a lot of contrast, and we're not doing a lot of highlighting with this paint job. A little bit of dry brushing, but we're using the Zenithal highlight for the cloaks, for the spells, for the skin. So it's quick and it's fun. Thank you very much for watching. You know the drill. Like, share, subscribe. Fax it to your local council. You do you. And farewell.